I've talked a lot about the passive meta in World of Warships, especially at tier 10, but sometimes I get these lucky matches where I can push in and it's actually a good strategy. Normally it's going to end in an early death and back to port very quickly, but in this game I got quite lucky and I was in my Kremlin, which is one of the best battleships for pushing in. Sure, it doesn't have Hydro like the German battleships, it doesn't have secondaries either, but what this ship does have is very, very little superstructure, a ton of armor, fast reloading damage controls, and of course we have some decent accuracy at close range. So the Kremlin is a bit of a beast when it pushes in. It of course would like a bit of support when it does, but this game we're going to see just how quickly I'm able to get into a hyper aggressive position. This map has the potential for some amazing games in the A cap. These two angled islands on our right are perfect for segmenting off the enemy team. You're going to notice that most of the enemy team in their spawn won't be able to shoot me. All I have to do is deal with the enemy team on the 1-2 line and that's really the danger of this push. But the reason it works out so well here is our Shimakaze pushing up the one line so aggressively. We eat at one torpedo from the gearing, not a huge deal all things considered, but that's the major threat is a destroyer getting out on that flank, permanently spotting us for a cruiser hiding behind that island in C2. But we notice that the enemy team doesn't have anyone playing there. Part of the reason I made this push so aggressively was my own team's spawn point. Myself, the Hindenburg, and the Shimakaze were the only ones that spawned on this flank. And while spawns are not completely symmetrical, it's safe to assume when there's no divisions in the game that the enemy team has spawned in a similar pattern to you, meaning they only had three ships here, which allows me to get into this extremely aggressive position relatively safely. I won't lie, the Hindenburg full sending it in also impacted my decision. When you have somebody pushing in that aggressively, it always is nice to go with them. Of course, the Hindenburg having a Hydro definitely helped us out. We do have to worry about this uh, submarine pushing in behind us. So you're going to notice I'm going to try and keep my rear turret constantly pointed directly behind me. You can do this quite easily by swapping your aim from the left side of your ship to your right side of your ship once the turret is fully fixed behind you. It's not too big a deal on Kremlin though because our turret traverse is so amazing as you can see. For guns this big, it's pretty solid. You'll notice I'm going to aim very low here, even into the waves of the water a little bit, since we don't want to overpen Worcesters. And we get a Citadel in our first salvo, and I've taken my final position for this game. <laughs> Already less than five minutes in, and I'm on the enemy's side of this capture zone, putting immense pressure on their team. They of course have so many people here that they have to deal with me somehow. And of course, they're going to try and YOLO me with a Napoli, with a gearing potentially. Of course, the Wooster tried and failed. The reason they have to push me is that they have a lot of teammates here, which results in their team having very few forces on the C flank. Yes, they do have the cap at the moment, but well, they're not going to hold it for too long considering that our team is very well spread out across the map. And the enemy team is concentrated in this corner of the map. Of course, I am not getting greedy here for my rear turret. That's something you're also going to notice as we go through this. I mentioned the superstructure being so small. Well, it becomes a very easy, large, easy to hit target when you show enough broadside to get your rear turret online. But it's so narrow when directly bow on that it's very difficult to deal damage into this superstructure. I'm also very liberally using my damage controls in a Kremlin. Assuming that you have a damage control available and you're in an aggressive position like this, you probably want to be repairing things as quickly as possible. Maybe not a single fire, but flooding you probably want to be repairing, especially if you're losing a gun in an early brawl like this. That's very, very bad. Look at that. Columbo Sap hits us and does very, very little damage. The superstructure is saturated at this moment, so we're not going to take too much damage through there, and they can't do much damage to our hull. At this point, our team is of course pushing in a little bit to help us, but we've done a lot of work here to prevent the enemy team from pushing. I managed to citadel a Borgone, that's a pretty rare sight considering the turtleback. It's not German turtleback, but it's still pretty good stuff. 
What you have to do with the French battleships, if you want to citadel them, at least at close range, this can work. So you have to aim under their turrets. For whatever reason, that seems to be where their citadels are easiest to hit. Doing so at a 30 to 50, 60 degree angle seems to be the most consistent for me. And look at this, the Borgon is doing next to no damage to us bow on. I'm of course waiting for my heals to come back up. I don't want to show enough broadside that he can do huge chunking damage into my superstructure. Maybe even get some decent pens into my side. So I'm just playing it safe. I know I can outlast him, especially considering my team help. And I instantly swap over to the gearing. This is another really important thing to notice when you're brawling. The destroyers are some of the biggest threats to you because those torpedoes hit very hard, cause you to use your damage control, which then can mean permanent fires. And of course, the permanent spotting is great for if a enemy cruiser is free farming you from behind an island. So that's why I'm constantly going after DDs. We get a few hits onto the Balao as well. Our Shimakaze does an excellent job of taking out the gearing, and the Balao goes down. And just like that, we've pushed in, held A, and won this game. Really, really fast result here, but I honestly had a ton of fun this game. These sorts of pushes don't happen very often anymore, and I enjoyed every second of it, so I had to share it with you guys. And for those of you curious about the build, we are of course using Kuznetsov, easily the best commander for the Kremlin. It's incredibly easy to activate his special ability, which gives us an extra damage control, heal, and it makes it harder for enemies to hit us because we actually increase the dispersion of enemies firing at us. Pretty ridiculous commander here and perfect for the Kremlin. We're of course using gun feeder since at close quarters, if a destroyer YOLOs you, it is very nice to have that one massive punchy HE salvo. And I also sometimes switch to HE to deal with bow on battleships. Something I didn't do in this game, but it is a viable strategy with the Kremlin. Adrenaline rush, basic survivability, emergency repair expert definitely required since we're getting a whole nother damage control. Since we only have four of them base, having five is quite nice. And you'll notice even with these upgrades, we only have four heals. Because Kremlin is so tanky, they didn't give it the full five heals with the full build. So even though we have a lot of base HP advantage, we actually lose out on total healing compared to some of the other tier 10 battleships. Although of course, it's much more valuable to just have that HP permanently than to have it at the very end of a long five heal cooldown. Running reload, since there's really no other option here, don't be running the, <laughs> don't be running the legendary mod. It's very much not worth getting on this ship, but a pretty standard build all things considered. Kremlin has a ridiculous acceleration for how big this ship is. Still often see me speed juking back and forth on these islands and I'm able to dodge a lot of salvos that way as well. And I definitely want to maximize this damage control. The AA is so weak that even specking into auxiliary armaments really doesn't save it from HE salvos. And the turrets are tough enough that I don't feel like I really need main armaments mod one. So extending those damage controls is very useful on this ship. Kremlin is still an excellent tier 10 battleship, even though the meta isn't quite suited for it. It's an excellent pushing ship, and when you get the right matchmaker, it's a ton of fun. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.